Hey guys, it's Rob from Hypop and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be going through and comparing the full range of Godox flash strobes and how to decide which one is right for you. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell to be updated of any new videos we release. Leave down in the comment section below your thoughts on the Godox flash robes and if you have any questions about them, we'll be happy to answer them. Also drop a like if the video has helped you in any way and don't forget to follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Let's get into it. So before we get started, just a couple of disclaimers. Firstly, we have the most recent Godox flash strobes with us here. There are definitely quite a few models out on the market and there are Mark I versions as well as the brand new Mark II versions and now even also a Mark III version. So what we'll be going through are the most recent and basically newly available flash strobes on the market from Godox right now. So this includes the MS series, the DS2 series, also the SK2 series, QS2, the QT2, and the DP3. So these are the flashes where we'll be going through, all the flashes around me here. Now, how to decide what flash is right for you. Firstly, uh, there's a few factors. The output and the space you have to work with. So you need to determine the amount of space you have in your studio, in that indoor setup, whether that's at home or if you've got a full studio setup. If you have roughly about a three meter by three meter space, which equates to 10 foot by about 10 foot. So what you actually need to determine is the output. So a good starting point is roughly about the 300 or 400 watt flashes. And if you have a couple of those lights, one on either side to have even lighting for that amount of space. If you need more power, or if you have a larger space, you can obviously step up in output with the wattage. So you can go even the 600 watts, 800 watts, 1000 watts, and even 1200 watts with your flash. So it's always good to have a little bit more power. So if you do have a 600 watt, then you can always step it down to the 300 or 400 watt output. Um, to make it suitable for your space. The next factor will be the recycle time. So if you'll be shooting fast motion, if you need to have really fast recycle time, then there are some of the higher end flashes that are suitable for that. Next one will be price. So if you uh, have a certain budget that you need for your particular flash, whether this is going to be a permanent setup or if you just need something that will get the job done, you can go with some of the lower end flashes and also the high end flashes if you're after some of the other flashes that have more features. And lastly uh, is the triggering option. So the triggering options, if you're going to be using a particular camera brand, the good thing about these new Godox range of flashes, especially all the Mark II ones like I have with me here, they have inbuilt receivers that makes it, make it compatible with the X1, the X2, and the X Pro triggers, where you have compatibility with Canon, Nikon, Sony, Olympus, Panasonic, Fuji, and even Pentax now. So Godox are supporting a wide range of camera brands to suit for all your studio needs. So all of these flashes feature a Bowens mount, which means the front of them support Bowens modifiers, including soft boxes, barn doors, beauty dishes, snoots, and a wide range of lighting modifiers. On top of that, they are compatible with all of Godox's triggers, even backwards compatible with their older triggers. So that means the X1 trigger, the X2 trigger, the X Pro trigger, as well as the older legacy triggers, which include the FT16 and the XT16. They have the USB ports at the back of all of these flashes, which means that you can plug in some of their older triggers and use them that way. They are all manual flashes, so these flashes don't have TTL capabilities, which shouldn't be a problem because you'll be indoors most of the time when using these flashes. They all require AC input, so you can power them via the power point, and also you won't have changing conditions indoors, so you can manually control them whether you're using a lighting meter or you know adjusting it based on your environment. Uh, you should be able to control all the lighting including all the ambient lighting available in your space. Using these flashes as your main source of light would be the ideal scenario. Now in terms of the order in which they were released, it's a little bit complicated in how they've released these because some of the older generation flashes still are better than some of their newer flashes and it's confusing what's the differences between each of these flashes. They are very minor in terms of how many steps of output they have and just some little features which we'll run through shortly. Now in terms of the chronological order of the actual flashes, the actual flashes released 
Um, first, we'll put that up on screen so you can see which ones were released first, because the chronological order is actually different to the order in which they have in terms of amount of features um, or which flashes are better. The first flash that we'll probably be jumping into is the MS range of flashes. We'll be going through the flashes in terms of the actual ranking or how they have them set up on the Godox website in terms of which flash is sort of the one with the least amount of features up to the one with the most amount of features. First one will be the MS series of flashes. When deciding on the output of your flash, some of the ranges of Godox's flash strobes are actually limited to the maximum amount of output that you'll receive from their top end models. A perfect example of this is the MS series. So the MS series, I have the MS300 here. There are only two versions available, the MS200, which is 200 watts, and the MS300, which is 300 watts. They don't have higher powered strobes, so that'll be a factor also determining on how much output you require and which flash series models you need to go to. So the MS series here, it's actually one of their newer flashes. However, it's one of their more compact ones and sort of made from a plastic build. It's really one of the entry level flashes available with Godox and they still have the Bowens mount as well as an umbrella mount to mount different lighting modifiers. These flashes are great because they're nice, small and compact as well as cost effective. You can control the output of each of the flashes here in terms of the output from one over 32 strength to full strength at one over one in 0.1 stop increments. Now, it's pretty much a no frills light. You have the E27 modeling lamp and there aren't really any deeper menu options. However, the build is quite nice despite it being plastic. It's got a nice handle up here and obviously it supports all those different lighting modifiers. It also supports the X1, X2 and X Pro triggers. So using this flash as a run and gun sort of studio portable setup if you have a studio location indoors and then if you have to move to another location, they're nice and compact. So it's easy to carry around with you as part of your lighting kit. The next flash in the range are the DS series of flashes. There's a new Mark II version of the DS302. It's also available in a model called the DE2 version. So if you've seen those around, it's pretty much the same model. You can see here it's an updated design. So if you've seen previous models, they're actually a little bit smaller than this one here. Now in terms of the available outputs, it's available in 300 watt and 400 watt variants. And you can control the output from one over 32 to one over one strength in 0.1 stop increments. You also have a recycle time of within one second at full output. So it's got a pretty fast recycle time, even at full output, which is great considering this is a lower end flash. Now it also has a Bowens mount and that umbrella modifier mount, which is just that bottom middle here. And it also has that nice handle to control the tilt and controlling the light positioning. The next flash in the range are part of the GS2 series. The GS2 series are available in 200 watts, 300 watts and 400 watt variants. They also have a power output range of 1 over 32 to 1 over 1 and you can adjust that at 0.1 stop increments. Also feature the Bowens mount as well as the umbrella mount here. And they have a recycle time of 0.3 seconds up to 1 second. So it's really similar to the previous models which were the DS or the DE2 range. You can see here the design looks really similar besides the fact that it actually has a top handle here instead of a back handle. So they all pretty much look the same. And in terms of the output and controls, pretty much all the same. These are all compatible with the X-Series triggers as well as backwards compatible with the FT16 and the XT16. So the next flash in the range are part of the SK2 series. There was a previous series which was just the SK Mark 1 and now it's the SK Mark 2. This is a popular flash and we've actually done an unboxing and review of this. If you want to take a look at that, click the link up above. Now in terms of the output availabilities, this is available in 300 watt and 400 watt variants. You also have a lesser range of output. So you've only got one over 16 strength up to one over one strength, but at one over 16 strength, you actually have a one second recycle time. So the recycle time ranges from 0.1 to one second. You can actually increase and decrease the output in 0.1 stop increments. Now this flash itself is actually quite popular as one of their sort of entry level flash ranges. 
It's actually made from a plastic build here and it has a handle at the back. Also has that Bowens modifier mount, an umbrella mount, and also compatible with the Godox X range of triggers as well as their legacy triggers, the FT16 and XT16. So the next flash in the range is part of the DP Mark III series. Now we're starting to get into the higher end flashes as part of the Godox flash strobe range. The DP Mark III is the latest version. There were previous DP Mark IIs and also the DP Mark I versions. This one here has a few more functions to the other entry level flashes. Firstly, you have output ranges starting from 400 watts, 600 watts, 800 watts, and also 1000 watts. So you have a larger range of output options there including if you want ones that'll shoot larger groups of people, including things like school photography, massive scenes, you can actually use the higher end 1000 watt outputs there. Now when turning this one on, you actually have a wider output range as well. So you have from one over 64 strength all the way up to one over one at 0.1 stop increments. And you also have a custom function menu, which allows you to jump into some of the other settings, including wireless ID and things such as setting up how the LCD screen looks like in terms of fractions or decimal points. Now, in terms of the actual mount, it's also still a Bowens mount. It has the umbrella lighting modifier mount there, and it basically is a better quality build flash. At full output, the DP Mark III series gives you a one second recycle time, which is really fast, given that they have a wider range of flashes there, so you can go all the way up to that 1000 watt and still have that one second recycle time. Now the next flash in the range is part of the QS2 series. The QS2 series are available in 400 watt, 600 watt, 800 watt, and 1200 watt variants. This was always the second to the top tier of Godox flashes, and it has been for quite some time because this model of flash has been around for a while. If you want to see the full unboxing and review, we've actually done one of those, so you can click the link up above. Now this one here has Output range from 1 over 32 strength all, over, all the way up to 1 over 1 strength at 0.1 stop increments. It also has the Bowens mount as well as the umbrella lighting mount. So you can actually mount all of those and compatible with the X series triggers as well as the legacy triggers, the FT16 and the XT16. The actual build is an aluminium build, so it's a high quality build and actually it looks really similar to the QT series of flashes, which is their top end range. Now, in terms of the actual features of the flash has a recycle time of 0.3 seconds to 1.5 seconds at full output. So you can see even comparing to the previous model, which is the DP3 series, it actually has a slower recycle time because it is one of the older flashes. Godox are now replenishing some of their flashes. So there may be a new Mark III version of this or perhaps a new model um, that supersedes this in the future. Now the last flash is part of the QT2 series, which is Godox's top of the range flashes. These flashes have the most amount of features and are available in power outputs from 400 watts, 600 watts, and also 1200 watts. Now they have the most features in terms of power output range. So you have a power output range of 128 strength all the way up to one over one strength at 0.1 stop increments. You can also use high speed sync all the way up to one over 8,000th of a second. It's compatible with the Godox X series triggers as well as their legacy triggers, the FT16 and XT16. It also has the same features as all the other flashes, including the Bowens mount, the umbrella mount, and also made from a high quality aluminum chassis here, as well as that tilt handle and that control handle on the side there. Now, if you want all the features in a flash, this is the one to go for. It also has a fast recycle time from 0.05 seconds up to 0.9 seconds. So if you're wanting to stop motion and take really quick shots and need that fast recycle time, this is the flash to go for. So before we jump into my final thoughts and recommendations as to which flashes suit what categories, firstly, there are a few videos that may be relevant, which will be our Godox trigger comparison, which we'll link up above. Also a comparison of the speed light flashes. So if you're after portable on-camera flashes, we'll link that up above. 
And lastly is the Godox portable range of Witstro flushes, which are the popular 8200 Pro, 300 Pro, 400 Pro, 8600 Pro, and the brand new 8200 Pro. We'll link that up above and down in the description below. So my final recommendations and the overall favorite flash from the range of Godox flush strobes would be the DP3 series, which I have with me here. DP3 series has a wider range of output options, including 400, 600, 800, and 1000 watt variants. It also has high speed sync up to one over two thousandth of a second. So if you don't need that full high speed sync of the top tier QT2 series, it has that. It has the Bowens mount, has the umbrella mount, the high quality build, and is compatible with all of the Godox triggers. Overall, this flash has pretty much everything that you need in a flash. And if you want to jump into certain output ranges, depending on the space that you have, this one here has the most options available. If you want everything in a flash and all the features, Definitely, you can't look past the QT2 series. It has high speed sync up to one over eight thousandth of a second, has a really fast recycle time up to 0.9 seconds. It also has a output ranges and options available from 400, 600 and 1200 watts, that high quality build and pretty much all you need in a studio flash. And lastly would be the most budget friendly flash, which is the SK400 2 series. So you have them available in 300 and 400 watt options really is one of the budget friendly ones. So if you're conscious about spending too much on a flash, this one here is the one to go for. It has everything that you need. It's a no frills flash. You have the Bowens mount, the umbrella mount and compatible with the Godox X triggers. Now I can't go without giving a special mention to the new MS series of flashes, which are Godox's budget entry level series of flashes. So they're available in 200 watt options and also 300 watt options really is a nice, small, compact light, especially if you're just starting out in photography. So if you're after your first studio light, you can't look past the MS series. So for more videos just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be updated of any new videos we release. If you have any questions about any of these Godox flashes, leave them down in the comment section below. Drop a like on this video if it's helped you in any way. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Thanks for watching.